My name is Brian Blick. Today we are taking a look at the Jujijime or cross collar strangle from the seated butterfly guard. So this is a technique that we use when our partner is on their knees. If our partner is standing up, there's too great a gap between our upper bodies to be able to affect the strangle uh, in this fashion. So we look to begin the cross choke from the seated position when our partner is on their knees or at least pretty close to our head level. All right. So how do we go about it? Well, first, if there's some distance between us here, we don't want to reach and overextend taking our elbow too far away. So we'll plant a hand and we'll bring our body forward. This action of scooting in, getting closer to your partner is very important, gi or no gi, to be able to have some mobility and distance between you and regulate that distance. So we're gonna slide in, we're gonna favor one side. That means we're gonna take one leg, put it on the inside for a half butterfly. We're gonna take our left hand, open our partner's collar. Now, very important. A lot of times when this technique is taught, people think that they have to pull down on the collar and then take a grip. In fact, it's the opposite. What we wanna do is we wanna push on our partner's collar. We push, and when we do this, this slight push, we create a gap between our partner's neck and the lapel. And when that happens, we have a space for our hand to go into. If you're pulling, you'll find that when you put your hand in, you can only go about as far as your partner's ear line. And really what we want is for this hand to go back farther around behind our partner's ear line, okay? You don't have to get your knuckles on your partner's uh, spine, but getting it close is pretty good. So we begin, our partner's hands will probably be up, we're gonna tuck a leg, scoot in. We use a two-on-one method, not a pull, but a push to open the lapel. Then we take our hand and we slide it up. Don't try to just put your four fingers in, okay? It's very difficult to do this, just jamming the four fingers in. So instead we start low and we slide. Once we get this grip, then we fold. As we fold, what are we doing? We're making a fist and we're rolling our wrist forward. This is going to expose the sharp part of our wrist right here. And it puts it directly against our partner's karate right by their ear. Now, we have our grip. You can fully expect your partner to begin to start to defend here, All right? They're looking to strip the grip. So after your first initial grip is set, often it's very tempting to start to reach right away for the second side. So instead of just trying to reach where often our partner will intercept our hand and then from here they come back and strip our grip and we lose the whole thing. Instead of trying just kind of naively to go here across, we're going to bring our partner's head down. The way that we do that is with the Hizagaruma action. We take our left foot, our inside foot here, and we place the sole of our foot against our partner's knee. We're gonna push. At the same time, we're gonna pull. When we push, we're not sliding our partner's leg back in the direction directly behind them, but rather we're gonna open it up. So we open it up by flaring our partner's knee and then pulling to bring our partner's head down. Once this happens, we can see the gi, this line of tension across the back of our partner's neck. Now from here, we can gather up our partner's, fa the fabric of our partner's uh, gi. You don't have to put your four fingers in, you can. You could put your thumb in. For today, we're gonna go by gathering simply the fabric. We want our wrist to be close to our partner's neck, but not so close to our own hand that we can't drop our elbow. Next, we take our elbow down, and very important, we bring our elbow to our forearm beneath the line of our partner's chin. Don't try to start a strangle where you're forearm is against your partner's jawline, okay? It's too difficult to submit your partner that way. You've got to go down and under. So we drop the elbow. Next, we connect our chin to our hand on the top side. We draw our partner to us. We think about elbows going down to the floor and head staying high. Once we do this, we bring our elbows down, we retract, and we find a very, very quick finish here out of this uh, butterfly guard position. So our partner is kneeling facing us. If there is some distance between us, we begin at the hands. We tuck a leg so that we can scoot. We use a two-on-one method to push, reach, slide, and get a firm grip. Our partner will usually defend. So instead of trying to reach for our partner's second collar or second grip, we're going to put our foot on our partner's knee, pull and drive, getting their hands down to the floor. Of course, if they don't post, they're going to go face first into the mats and have a good incentive to do so. We get our grip on this side. We close our elbows and we make sure we go under the line of our partner's chin. We put our chin on our own hands. This is going to connect us. So as he goes to sit up, pull away, we can even follow our partner up. 
keeping our chin and our, our hands connected. We drop our elbows, and we have a very powerful strangle here, the cross choke or jujijime. When you do this, you want to keep in mind once again that you have your first grip, and before you try to get your second grip, it's always a good idea to bring your partner's head down below the line of your head so that you can reach that second grip with a little bit more ease. When you do so, you'll find that your percentage rate of finishing goes up, and you'll find that this grip is much more robust. It's harder for your partner to break. Hopefully this was helpful for you. You enjoyed it. If you have questions, let us know. We'll see you soon.